Ma! Yo, there's a stray cat outside. I don't want it starting a fight with Lucy. Lucy, it's okay. It's okay, Lucy. Don't worry about it. Ma! Ma, there's a weird stray cat outside. Incineroar is without a doubt the best Pokemon in the history of VGC. What's insane about this is that this has lasted three generations with new gen power creep. In a game where Pokemon can have two abilities, Pokemon can hit through protect and always crit, and Pokemon can get stronger from being in a losing position, Incineroar remains at the top of the pack. Today, we're finally going to explain the problem with Incineroar. If you enjoyed this video at any point in time, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more competitive Pokemon content. As a matter of fact, you should subscribe right now because of a playlist full of content just like this that I know you'll enjoy once this video ends. And if you think you're subscribed, do me a favor and double check because like only half of my viewers actually are. With that, let's get into it. At first, people really didn't like Incineroar's design. And then people really liked Incineroar's design. And then people realized that this Meow Mix beefcake has some stats to him. Unfortunately, it just didn't outclass the other fire type of the generation which had been dominating the format, Arcanine. While Incineroar boasted a strong move pool that included Fake Out, U-Turn, and Flare Blitz, Arcanine had one thing that Incineroar just didn't. Yet. Intimidate. By combining Intimidate with Snarl and Will-O-Wisp, Arcanine was able to be a strong damage control Pokemon that had great burst damage options and stab Flare Blitz, while also resisting Dazzling Gleam from the many fairies dominating the format. Incineroar did see some usage on occasion, most notably at the hands of Giovanni Costa on his iconic Dragonite team, but it broadly was looked over in favor of Arcanine for all of 2017. However, once Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon rolled around in 2018, it had even greater competition in Lander Asterion, who had then dethroned Arcanine as the premier Intimidate Pokemon in the format. But the entire format would get turned upside down once Game Freak released the Beast. Yet, Incineroar was something of a ticking time bomb. We all knew it would eventually get access to its hidden ability of Intimidate, but the power of Intimidate combined with Fake Out, U-Turn, Snarl, Will-O-Wisp, Flare Blitz, Taunt, Knock Off, Roar... Okay, I'm not listing all that. The point is, Incineroar became a menace in VGC. If you needed a Fake Out Pokemon, you'd go with Incineroar. If you needed a Fire type, you'd go with Incineroar. If you needed an Intimidator, well, you might go with Landorus, but you'd probably go with Incineroar. As a matter of fact, for all of 2018 after the release of Intimidate Incineroar, Incineroar and Landorus Therian were competing for the number one spot, both at absurdly high usage. However, by the end of the format, Incineroar not only took the number one spot, but it won the World Championships by using the move Snatch of all things, which is a since-deleted move that would cause the user to steal any status move used by the opponent, including the likes of Tailwind and Belly Drum. While this was an interesting tech move, Incineroar having access to cool support moves was basically the name of the game. It was the thing that set it apart from every other Pokemon, and this would just be foreshadowing things to come. The team was created and piloted by Paul Ruiz to win the 2018 World Championships, and Incineroar was certainly the star of the team. And it was really strong, but it'd certainly get less usage in 2019 with the introduction of restricted legends like Kyogre and Groudon, right? Wrong. Incineroar got even higher usage with players realizing that this thing could literally do anything. Incineroar could run a Pasho Berry to tank a Water Spout and then Snarl or knock off an opposing Kyogre. It could tank a Presbus Blades pretty easily at minus one attack and then heal off the damage with a Figgy Berry. Mind you, Figgy Berries back then healed 50%, so this dude was really tough to KO. Players would even run Roar Incineroar to force Xerneas off the field after it Geomancies to reset those boosts, and Incineroar could pretty easily tank that hit with its famous 236-236 EV spread. They even found out that Incineroar could use Incinium Z to straight up one-shot Lunala through Shadow Shield, which allowed it to tank practically any attack from full health, usually. This thing was a check to multiple restricted legendaries, and its utility wasn't to be overlooked as once again it won the World Championships in 2019. And spoilers, the only World Championship that Incineroar hasn't won since it got Intimidate was in 2023 and that's probably just because it wasn't in the game yet. Surely, with such high usage and great performances in 2018 and 2019, the Pokemon Company would give Incineroar some kind of nerf in Generation 8. And they did. Incineroar no longer had access to Knock Off, because it was a tutor move. But they gave it Parting Shot. This was insane. There's frankly no reason Incineroar should have access to such a powerful support move. 
For reference, Parting Shot causes the user to lower the target's attack stat and special attack stat before switching out. Keep in mind, U-Turn was one of the moves that made Incineroar so ridiculous in Generation 7, because it allowed for Incineroar to intimidate and then immediately pivot out. Now Incineroar could intimidate to lower something's attack, then pivot out while lowering their attack and special attack with Parting Shot, and if you let off with a slower U-Turn Pokemon next to Incineroar, it could lower something to minus 3 attack in a single turn while getting back on the field and threatening Fake Out once again. But at least it lost knockoff, right? Yeah, that's a fair trade. Once again, in Generation 8, Incineroar managed to be the top Pokemon. For many of the same reasons it was able to in previous gens, only this time it had to deal with Dynamax Pokemon. Now, mind you, Incineroar managed to be the best Pokemon in the game, despite the fact it would almost never Dynamax itself. It managed to remain relevant because when you and your opponents have one giant click funny buttons Pokemon, the name of the game is reducing the damage and making sure that that Pokemon doesn't get to have fun. And with Parting Shot and Intimidate, Incineroar was the ultimate no fun Pokemon. It was able to even hold its own in Dynamax restricted formats by checking the likes of Zacian, Calyrex Ice, and Calyrex Shadow with its natural typing as well as its deep well of support move. Once again, it won the World Championships in 2022. What happened in 2020 and 2021? Nothing, we actually didn't have a circuit those years. We were all inside watching Wolfie videos. So how about today? What about Generation 9? Do I really need to explain? Not only did Incineroar keep parting shot from the previous gen, but it even got knockoff back. Incineroar briefly went through a fraud phase, which was instantly proven to be dumb and stupid and fake because it won the Charlotte Regional Championship pretty decisively, but Incineroar is one of the best terrestrialization Pokemon in the game, even with open team sheets revealing which Terra it's running. Before, Incineroar had to either run a Citrus Berry to live Surging Strikes from Urshifu or Safety Goggles to avoid getting put to sleep by Amoongus, but now it can just click a button, turn into a Grass type, and beat both. And hey, why worry about Speed Tears in the Fake Out War when you can just become a Ghost type and ignore the other Fake Out while dodging a close combat in the process? Point is, Incineroar is still really strong, and this is despite us finding out that Zamazenta with Body Press is a top tier. I know, right? What timeline do we live in? and the fact that the clear amulet getting added to the game has been a major nerf for intimidators across the board. Oh yeah, the clear amulet is literally an item which allows for a Pokemon to ignore intimidate and any other stat dropping thing that the opponent does to it. So what did Incineroar do to adapt to this? He just went, LOL, okay, Will-O-Wisp, hold this burn, bozo. We can't stop this dude, he keeps changing, he keeps adapting. So what is the problem with Incineroar? Incineroar is overpowered, not in the it one-shots the whole team, or boosts with each KO, or has no switch in sense. No, Incineroar is a Swiss army knife of a Pokemon. It's overpowered in the most passive-aggressive way possible. It's not deleting Pokemon off the face of the earth like Miraidon, but it has so much field control with its combination of Intimidate, Fake Out, Pivoting Moves, and other support options that simply getting one on the field allows you to better control the pace of a battle than you can with any other Pokemon. Incineroar warps the game around it. Everything that happens in this game, in the battles, in the team builder, is done within the context of Incineroar existing. Incineroar is Landorus, Hitmontop, and Arcanine all rolled into one, and they can't compete with him. It's simply the best at what it does. The amount of prize money this dude has been responsible for winning could pass the GDP of a small country. He's simply the GOAT. But that's the problem with Incineroar. Personally, I love him. He's super cool, but I know not everyone agrees with me. So let me know what you think about Incineroar in the comments section below, and let me know what Pokemon I should cover next. If you enjoyed, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. It'd mean the world to me. And if you want to support me further, you can check out my Patreon page or become a YouTube channel member by clicking the join button below the video. This gets you sneak peeks at future videos and even some bonus content. You'll also see your name at the end of my videos like all these lovely people. A special thanks to my boosted supporters, Avatar67, Jordan Harridge, and Ranger Lance for their generous pledges. Another way to support my channel is to check out all the videos in the playlist on screen right now. I know you'll find something that you'll enjoy. I also have a second channel where I talk about the current VGC metagame trends and a Twitch channel where I stream battles. Both of them are going to be in the description down below. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!